Hi everyone, I'm Melanie of Art Studio 320 and welcome to my very first furniture revival video. That's right, I took a 30 year old bedroom set, four pieces, and I revived them, made them brand new and beautiful. Stick around so you can see the process and see how it all comes out. Here we go. I'm going to sand this first and I'm going to sand all three, but uh, yeah, we'll see how it goes. Wish me luck. <laughs> When I started sanding, I was using a Porter Cable workhorse sander and it was pulling off this wood filler and then sticking itself to the sandpaper and scratching the top. So I decided to go all the way to the naked wood and it's beautiful, but it did take a lot of work and I did have to change the grit to a lower number. 80 grit. Pretty, pretty rough, pretty coarse. I sanded down the sides by hand. It was just easier for the small piece. And later I used a finishing sander to do the other pieces. I'm using a very coarse sandpaper. It leaves behind scratches that you really can't see that would probably come out after I start staining. I don't want that. So I'm going to go back with a much finer grit and uh, kind of smooth that out. The 220 grit sandpaper worked very well. It was nice and smooth when I was finished. Now it's time to remove the hardware and get it all set to paint. It looks just like the bedside table, but bigger. I don't want the dust to get in the inside of where my clothes are. That'd be a drag. Eventually, I did have to take my clothes out, but taping it worked really well. To do this in your bedroom. Yeah, make sure you cover everything with plastic, which I did, except I forgot the curtains. They weren't too bad. Sanding the top of the armoire worked pretty well. I did have some trouble with the sander. The little cup kept popping off and spitting out dust, but in the end, it worked. I'm ready to do the last piece. I'm just sanding the top. That's all we're doing today. All right. With the dresser, I had more of a method to my madness. I stayed in one area and just gradually moved my way down. Because the varnish was so thick, it really did take a long time and there was a lot of dust. The cap came off and exploded all over the room. But as you see, it got the job done. Last little part, folks. Last little part, two little parts. You might notice it looks like it's snowing. I've got all three pieces sanded on the top. I need to sand the edges of this one and the armoire. Paint comes tomorrow. In the meantime, it's so dirty in here. <sighs> I tried a Makita finishing sander on these doors and as you can see, it was a complete disaster. Just like the other two pieces, I started with a hand sander <laughs> and then I went to the finishing sander and that was like a dream. So it was time to clean up the furniture with some vinegar and water and get it ready to paint. I want to be responsible, not always, <laughs> and tape off all my hard work sanding the top. Milk paint, general finishes. 
Let's see how it goes. It's water-based. Check it out. Oh. The color I chose was Twilight. It was quite dark and beautiful. You want to make sure you always stir up your paint before you start. I started with a light coat because I hadn't used this paint before. So I wanted to be a little on the conservative side, just to be sure. But as I went along, I got more comfortable with it. I wiped down each piece with tack cloth before I painted to get rid of any dust. I'm really happy with this blank paint. It's so smooth and really like how it looks. All right, I'm gonna go sit down for a while. I'm beat. The second coat of Twilight went on very well. It was very smooth and had a great finish when it dried. Overall, I was very pleased with this paint and I'll definitely use it again. One thing you want to be sure to do is take off the painter's tape right after you paint. That way you'll get a nice clean line. Good morning. This is day three and these are the drawers from the armoire. I will be working on the armoire today. Before I start painting, I want to sand these down with a 60 grit. It's a little rougher. Now I'm going to clean them with some a little bit of soap and water and then vinegar and water to get off all the dirt get them nice and clean and ready to paint the vinegar and water that i use is just a non-toxic way to clean it and you just mix it up in a an old bottle i mix maybe a one part to possibly three or four parts water i use the same formula on my wood floors it works really it's non-toxic and it's cheap. The armoire is clean. I've used the vinegar and water. I have vacuumed it and now I'm taping it off so I don't get any paint on my beautifully sanded top. I'm gonna to paint this just the same way I painted the bedside table. Just a light coat to begin with and then a second coat to finish it off. It really, it needed two coats and then I went back and touched up. I got this wood filler in the mail after I'd already started to paint. So I tried it anyway and I wouldn't recommend it. Definitely use it before you start to paint. I did the wood filler on this side. I'm gonna paint that last. It's dry, it's, I didn't use very much. So. One thing I learned about paint on your clothes <laughs> and your, your students' clothes, if you wash it out right away, it usually comes out, even acrylic paint, but you gotta do it right away. Ta -da, it's gone. Because the finishing sander didn't work very well, I used a block sander, which I really like to finish off the doors. And then I took off the hardware and sanded down those spaces. And then I collected all of my hardware and put it in a Ziploc bag for safekeeping. After using the 60 grit block, I took a 400 grit to go over the drawers before I cleaned them off with the tack cloth and then started to paint. The tack cloth is kind of a waxy feeling cloth and it takes up all of the lint and the dust and it is one of my favorite tools. <laughs> throwing that out there, you gotta have one. These doors and I kind of had to come to a reckoning, <laughs> but in the end, they really do look nice, but man, they did give me a lot of trouble, but I learned quite a bit, so. Right now, I'm taking off the hardware. I took the door off 
and then lightly sand everything, clean off all the surfaces. So let's get started. Woohoo! So I'm taking off the hardware and getting it ready to paint. Oh, there was my pup teddy. And this is the last piece, including the mirror. painting the last piece and it goes pretty quick because there really isn't a lot of wood on the body of the piece. It's mostly on the drawers. Good morning, it's day five. Five. Okay. I needed to take off the hardware so I could take off what I was calling the wings of the mirror. And it turned out that the, the screws were kind of tilted. So it gave me a lot of trouble. I had to put a lot of muscle into it, but I got it done. Notice I'm holding my knee up under the mirror and really slowly taking each screw out so I don't lose control and drop the mirror. When I finished taking the hardware off, I wanted to concentrate on taking that crown molding off of the top of the mirror to make it just a little, a little more modern. Man, it's really stuck on there. It came off, you guys. That's cool. That's cool. All I have to do is sand it. There were a couple problems when I took off the molding. It <laughs> turned out that the glue stuck really pretty well. And I had to sand it with a finishing sander and then go back in with some wood filler and then sand it again after it dried. Problem was, no matter how many times I sanded it, it never really did get as smooth as I wanted it to, but it worked. I'll use a different filler next time. <laughs> My zebra brushes came in the mail finally, and I used the Palm Pro on the body of the mirror and the small square for the detail. I just have to stop and tell you these zebra brushes i've used a lot of brushes these are amazing they are perfect for all the little nooks and crannies so way to go zebra again you want to remember to take the painter's tape off while the paint is still wet i had a couple spots i had to touch up but overall, it worked very well. All right, everybody, it's day six. <laughs> it's day six, final day. I'm using a tack cloth first to wipe off all the dust, and then I'm going to put a General Finishes satin top coat on the top of my dresser. Look how much dirt I pulled off of there. I'm using a 220 grit sanding block to sand after my top coat and then I'm giving a second coat. And I'm doing the same to 
the doors. An update. I put the general finishes satin top coat on the, the tops, which I sanded to the bare wood. It's a little darker than I would prefer. So I'm going to use the winter white water-based glaze on top to just tone it down a bit. So I'll show you what it looks like here. It's a satin finish. It's pretty, but it's very orangey. This is the winter white general finishes glaze effect I put on the top of all of the furniture and it really toned down the orange color. I had some trouble with the glaze because the air in our house is so dry. Even with the extender, it was drying faster than I would have wanted before I could rub it all in. So the effect was different than I had intended, but I still like the end result, especially after I sanded it. The bedside table, I tried a different technique of applying it, and that really looked nice too. I used the same high performance top coat on my doors before I did any of the other parts of the furniture, and it's this is a satin finish. It looks really glossy and I hate it. <laughs> I'm going to paint over it. I want a finished look. I gotta do something to protect it, um, but I'm not sure which product I'm gonna use yet, so stay tuned. Good morning, it's day seven. <laughs> Thought I'd be done by now. I ran into some problems yesterday. I, I used the glaze on the tops. I like it, but I'm gonna sand it down a little bit so that some of the wood shows through a little bit more. I'm gonna take some of it off and keep some of it, so. If you take a look at the top, it looks a little blotchy. <laughs> I attribute the blotched look <laughs> to the dry air. So I just had to sand it in order to get it the way I wanted it. And that's what happened to these doors. I tried to glaze them and I really didn't like the effect. So I just painted over them. Sometimes that's what happens, but you gotta give it a try. Turns out the general finishes satin top coat was too shiny for me, so I tried the Minwax Extra Flat. And I used this Palm Pro by Zebra to apply the polyurethane. And I really liked how the brush performed. It is Saturday and I've had a bit of a rough day. First I had the debacle with the finish, uh, the top finish, but the outcome in the end, I really love it. Then I decided to get just the Minwax polyurethane ultra flat. And this is what happened. Does that look flat to you? It really looks bad. And I talked to Phil and he said, yeah, that's weird. And then he said, did you stir up the can? And I thought, oh God, I didn't stir it up. I use that stuff all the time. Once I stirred it up, I then got this finish. And that's the matte finish that I was going for. Unbelievable. Now I'm taking steel wool, and I'm using a glove because I hate how steel wool feels. And I'm going to kind of degloss it. Um, I don't want to sand it because then I have to repaint it. And then I'm going to put another coat on it and it should be okay. Using the steel wool to take off the gloss worked really well and it didn't take any of the paint off. So I highly recommend that if you run into that problem. Here is round two of the Minwax Extra Flat. I did have to use a sanding block to get rid of some of the really shiny areas because the steel wool just wasn't working well enough. 
but it was very light so it didn't take off any of the paint. Here I'm showing you that I numbered the drawers so I can put them back in the right spot because all drawers are not created equal. I decided to use the Rust-Oleum metallic spray paint to upgrade my original hardware because the black wasn't going to show up very well with the blue. So I turned it metallic gold. Good morning. It's day it's actually day eight. My husband, Phil, was painting our bedroom. Can you tell? We're waiting on the knobs for the dresser and the armor and the bedside table. They are handmade, um, so the artist is in Texas. I bought them from Etsy. Yay, Etsy. They are really unique, and that says a little bit about my personality. Yeah, I'm unique, all right. <laughs> This is where all the swear words came into play. I had my share of issues with that stupid drill. I had a few dings, but the wood filler turned out to work really well. And then it happened again. <laughs> that particular drill was a little bit heavy for this job, so it would slip and leave a little divot, but it was easy to fix. Another fix I knew I needed to make was the magnet that held the door closed. Did you hear that? I just needed to tighten it up. Now I'm using my Zebra Square brush for detail to just finish up those little spots and they're good as new. Here comes the fun part. This is the winter white glaze effects again. I'm going to use it on the inlays in the furniture. And here I'm showing you on the mirror. You just put it on there. I didn't even need any extender. And you can wipe off as much as you need. And it's easy to clean off with a, a wet rag. And I wanted a lot of the blue to come through, but I also wanted the white to show up in the vines. It really brings out the detail in the piece and I really like that. I had some more practice with that hardware and my nemesis, the drill. <laughs> Turned out I made a couple more dings, but I, I did feel like with more practice, I did get better. Yes, I had a few more dings and I got smart and started using a cloth so that I wouldn't keep slipping because I did, <laughs> it just kept doing it. But I did get better and by the end, I think everything looks beautiful. A shout out to my husband, you see here in the cameo, helping me put the mirror back on. Thank you, Phil, for loaning me your tools and offering advice when asked and staying out of my way and just supporting me through all my crazy endeavors. You are an awesome husband. And after eight days of hard work and a few tears, I am very proud of how these pieces came out. I learned so much about myself and what I am able to do with some determination and some problem solving. I really loved this project and I'm excited for the next one. And I hope this has inspired you to try refinishing some of your own furniture but maybe just try one piece instead of an entire set. I will be leaving links in the comments below for all the materials that I used today so you can easily purchase them if you're interested. I hope you will subscribe to my channel and join me for future videos. 
Thank you so much for being here today. I'll see you next time.